Hi YouTube, today we're looking at a new flash from a company called Shani. The model is SN600SC. It's a new company that started making flashes. What we're going to do is we're going to open the box, we're going to see what's inside, we're going to see the main features of the flash, we're going to put it on a camera, we're going to put it on triggers, and uh, we're going to compare it to other flashes from Youngnuo. So stay around, let's start. So first off, the box is white. It's designed pretty well. It looks pretty nice. Um, let's see what are the main features of the flash. First of all, it supports the new radio transmission system from Canon. This is only with an external trigger and not internally though. It also supports high speed sync, uh, guide number of 62, TTL, both for Canon and Nikon. It supports optical transmission, um, and this could be used also as a master and a slave alongside with, t with TTL. So let's open the box and see what's inside. Alright, so we have a short manual in Chinese and also in English. It's actually pretty short, but it's not really interesting. We have the flash inside a flash pouch. And what do we have here? We have a warranty card from Shani. You can send this back to the company and get a full warranty. This is a pretty nice thing from a Chinese company. The pouch also has a belt loop in the back with Velcro in it. You can see it here. And also on the side, you have a little ring for hanging it up. Let's open the pouch. Here is the flash. And also inside, you get a little cold shoe for mounting your flash on it. Alright, so let's put everything aside so it's not in our way. And let's open the bag. So this flash is modeled after the Canon 600 RT. It looks very nice, looks very sturdy, looks exactly like the original. Has a button on the side for tilting the head for locking it. Um, I see it has a big display and the buttons look very nice. They are also lit. You will see it later in the review when we put batteries in. There's a button on the side for locking the head. As you can see, if I'm not pressing the button, the head will not tilt. Um, and it will also lock when the head is fully up or fully down. However, when the flash is in the middle, it will still tilt without having to push the button. So this is something that you should be aware about. The flash can swivel 360 degrees, as you can see. It has a small button for locking the battery cover. This is a nice feature. There is something inside, we can put it away. But before I close the battery cover, there's something I want to show you. Around the batteries there's a rubber gasket preventing water and probably dust from entering the battery compartment, which is a very nice feature. There's also a rubber gasket around the hot shoe, which is just like the Canon original version. And of course a very comfortable locking lever instead of a twist mechanism that used to be in other flashes, such as Yongnuo. The internal diffuser pops out easily. There's also a white bounce card. This white bounce card does not lock in. It could be easily pushed in if you're not careful. So this is another thing that you need to be aware about. Okay, so next up we're going to put batteries in the flash and we're going to see how it works. So the batteries I use are GP Recycle. The battery compartment is a little hard to open sometimes, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. So let's turn the flash on. It has three modes, off, lock, and on. I'm just going to switch this button to on. And you can see a little Shani logo. So this flash has a very big display. It has a dial, has backlit buttons, and also a green backlight to the display. The buttons change their function according to the mode that you're on. For example, this button controls the synchronization. Press it once and it'll switch to second curtain sync and press it twice for high speed sync. If you want to change the flash power, press here and use the dial to set your desired output. 
By the way, if you're one of those people, this matters too. The set button does not rotate along with the dial. To change the flash mode, just use the dedicated mode button. First you get ETTL, second press you get manual, and third press you get multi. For remote flash functions, there is a dedicated button with a lightning icon on it. First press gives you master optical for Canon. Second press gives you slave for Canon. Another press gives you slave for Nikon. And then the S1 and S2 modes that are manual only and do not communicate any TTL information. Another click puts you back into on-camera flash mode. The button on the left gives you control over the flash zoom. Press it and change the zoom with the dial. The zoom goes up to 200 millimeters, which is a very nice function on this flash. Long press on the same button reveals the custom functions menu, which gives you more control over your flash unit. I'm going to scroll through the functions so you can see them here, but we're not going to go into each function in this review. Okay, so it's time to put this flash on a camera and see how it performs. I'm going to test this flash with a Canon 5D Mark III and a Canon 50mm 1.4 lens. Let's see how this flash sits on the camera. It looks like the flash attaches very nicely and firmly with very minimal movement inside the hot shoe, which inspires confidence that it will not slip off. Let's turn on the camera. I'm going to take a test shot without the flash first. My camera settings are 200th of a second, f2.8, and ISO 200. I'll take a test shot of the window right in front of me. And I can see a proper exposure for the ambient light outside. Now I'll turn the flash on to see how it handles the exposure. And I'm getting a good exposure, which means the flash communicates properly with the camera. This test was using ETTL. As you can see it here on the display. Now I'm going to put it into high speed sync and ETTL and test it again. But first I'm going to take the camera and set the shutter speed to something faster than 200th of a second. For example, 4,000th of a second. This should darken the ambient exposure outside and light the window and shutters in front of me. Yep, and I can see that it has done it well. But let's just try a thousandth of a second, just to be sure. And it looks like it works well. Okay, let's look in the flash settings in the camera menus to see if we notice anything special. Let's go into external speed light control. You can see the flash modes, ETTL, manual, multi, external auto, and external manual. I don't think this flash supports these modes, and if I choose them, it reverts back to ETTL. But if I choose manual or multi, it allows me to choose it. You can see here that it does support optical wireless transmission as a master flash. But the zoom settings are interesting here because it does not list the 200 millimeters as an option. It allows me to set any zoom or anything up to 105 millimeters, but the 135 and 200 millimeter options do not show up here. Even though the flash itself does support it. So if I press the zoom button on the flash and I set it to 135 millimeters, it will be allowed. Same goes for 200 millimeters. If I try to take a photo, it will stay on 200 millimeters and it won't revert back to 105, which is the maximum in the camera menu. But when I look in the camera menu, it will say the flash is on 105, even though it's actually on 200. However, if I change it to 80, the flash will also change to 80 and will not keep the 200 millimeter setting. And again, if I set the flash to 200 millimeters, it will override the previous setting and stay 
in 200 millimeters. And if I look in the camera menu again, it will show up as 105 millimeters, not 200. Another thing that is featured on this flash is an AF assist light. It is located in the bottom of the flash, as you can see it here. This means that in harsh lighting conditions, the flash will illuminate with a red light and try to help the camera to focus. I'm going to put my hand over the lens so the camera thinks it is in darkness and the flash will illuminate the AF assist light. As you can see, it works pretty well. Let's try to point it at the table so you can see the pattern. You can see here that this is a line pattern and not a pluses and minuses pattern like other flashes from Young Nuo, for, for example. This AF assist lamp is an LED and not a laser, which in my opinion is better because if you're an event photographer and you shoot a lot of people, you don't want to shoot a laser right into their faces and potentially cause damages to their eyes. Next up, we're going to put this flash on the trigger and see how it performs. So the triggers that I have today are Young Nuo 622C. Of course, these triggers are from the competitors, but they should work fine together nonetheless. Let's put the flash on the trigger, see how it attaches. See it attaches quickly and firmly. And of course, I have the same trigger on the camera. Let's turn them on. So I'm going to set the triggers to something interesting, for example, ETTL. You could also see that every time I make a change on the camera, the flash reacts accordingly and accepts the new setting. Let's change the power output to see if the flash updates. Let's put it on one-fourth of the power. And it works well. Let's change it back to manual. Change it to full power. And indeed the flash updates to manual on full power as well. So the first test we're going to do is an ETTL. I'll point the flash forward and take another photo of the window in front of me. And again, the settings are 200th of a second, ISO 200 and F2.8. Looks like the flash fires properly. Next test, we're going to put the trigger on high speed sync. And set our shutter speed to 8,000th of a second. Also here, the flash fires properly, just as expected. Another thing you need to remember when you're using these triggers is that when you go into the flash menu, you can only set the zoom up to 105 millimeters and not 200. This means that if your flash is far away and you want to change the zoom remotely, the maximum would be 105 millimeters, unless you have set your flash to 200 millimeters before you left it. You will not be able to set it to 200 millimeters remotely. A short comparison to other flashes on the market. On the right, we have Shani SN600SC, the YN568 Mark I, and the YN565 also Mark I. Main differences between these flashes is that this flash could be used as an optical master, similar to the Mark II version of the YN568, but not of this one, the Mark I. Both these flashes support high-speed sync and TTL, while this one only supports TTL but no high-speed sync. The screen, of course, is a lot better on the Shani. It's clear, it's user-friendly, but on these flashes, the display is more old-school and not so pretty. Moreover, the Shani has the new locking lever, which is a lot more comfortable to take off and put on. While the Young Nuo, you have to break your fingers trying to turn the locking wheel. Same goes for when you want to put it on. You have to turn the wheel a few times and try to lock it in place hard. This is not comfortable in my opinion, and I really prefer this method, which is 
which is what the Canon 600 also uses. This flash also supports the new RT system from Canon. This could be accomplished by attaching a small trigger module from Shani. Module attaches here and could be triggered by an E3 trigger from Canon or Shani. The retail price for the YN56A2 and the SN600SC is similar and as of right now is priced around $120. In my opinion, if you have these two flashes and they are basically similar in features and price, you're better off taking the flash with a better display that supports the new radio transmission from Canon, which of course is not available with the YN568. One of the interesting features in this flash is that it has a guide number of 62, which is more powerful than Canon and Nikon's flashes. Basically what this means is that it's more powerful at the maximum power and also on lower power levels. Another thing this flash features is a faster recycle time, faster than both the Yongnuo and Canon offerings. So what we're going to do is put both of these flashes on full power. You can see that this one is set to 1x1 one one, and this one is also set to 1x1. One one. We're going to fire a few consecutive shots and see how quickly each of them recycles. These red lights, both here and here, mean that the flash is ready to fire. So once they turn red again, it means that the flash has recycled and it is ready to fire again. So I'm going to take a few shots now, see who turns back to red the fastest. Okay, this time the shiny was faster. Again, the shiny is faster. Pretty much similar. Shani was again a little faster. Again faster. Seems like pretty consistently the Shani is slightly faster, anywhere between half a second to a second. Please notice that the batteries are practically fully charged at this time in both of the splashes. The connections on the Shani that are available our standard PC sync connection, an external battery connection, which is great. This means that if you're a heavy strobist and you need a little more juice, you can connect to an external battery and the flash should recycle a little faster and respond more quickly for longer periods of time. Another available connection here is actually not a connection but a threaded screw hole for light stands. And the last connection we've already seen for the Canon RT system. The hot shoe is made out of metal, which is great. And by what I can see here, once you lock the lever, the pins do not move back and forth, which is a feature that is available for the new Canon 600. Once you lock the foot there, the pins go back and forth. This is a new mechanism that is supposed to protect the connection from dust. When you put it on a camera, this could potentially prevent communication problems between your flash and your camera. Too bad that this feature is not included. So it's time to wrap up this review. In the bottom line, I think this is a great flash, especially for the price. Gives you a lot of features, has great zoom, supports high-speed sync, supports ETTL. And from some quick tests I've done outside, it looked like it performs well and has pretty good exposure. In comparison to the YN568, which is the direct competitor, it has a few small advantages, which are an external battery port, it supports the new RT system, which is something that the YN568 does not support. Besides that, I think the screen is better, the display is nice and clear, and it is not some old digit screen display that the Yongnuo uses. This is much friendlier and pretty. And also, this has a button lock on the flash head that prevents it from tilting. I think this is a great flash, I really enjoy using it and I'm very happy with the purchase so I hope you will enjoy it too. Thank you much for listening, I hope you enjoyed and if you have any questions don't be afraid to send me a message or leave it here in the comments and I will try to answer them as best as I can. Thanks again, my name is Shlomi Cohen, bye for now.